Hello, I'm Dave Schelp from Hunter Industries. Today, we're going to install a Wi-Fi kit on an ICC2 controller, connect it to a network, and then configure it in Centralis software. Before we begin an installation, it's smart to check the signal strength at the proposed location to the customer's router to make sure the installation will be successful. You can check yourself with a smartphone. Go to the Wi-Fi settings, look for the customer's router in here. If the signal isn't visible or is very weak, we already know we need to do something. So we can reorient the customer's router or perhaps add a Wi-Fi range extender to get coverage at the location. The Wi-Fi kit comes with everything you need to connect an ICC2 controller to the internet. On a plastic controller, the first step is to open the knockout on the lower right side of the controller cabinet. The Wi-Fi kit contains the actual Wi-Fi communication module and wires, the mounting nut to secure the module in place, and a sync port adapter that allows the electrical connection of the module to the controller. A unique serial number is engraved on the inside edge of the Wi-Fi kit. You will need this, so write this number down so that it's easier to see later when you need it after installation. Feed all wires through the knockout and then insert them through the plastic nut. Tighten the nut securely over the Wi-Fi kit threads, securing the Wi-Fi kit in a perfectly vertical position. Disconnect the controller's ribbon cable from the power module. Install the sync port adapter in the power module receptacle. Connect the ribbon cable to the mating receptacle on the sync port adapter. Connect the data jack from the Wi-Fi kit to the mating connector on the side of the sync port adapter. Verify that the left light on the Wi-Fi kit is flashing and close the controller door. This completes the physical installation. Okay, with the hardware installed, it's time to begin the data connection process. Before we start, we need two things. The serial number off the Wi-Fi kit, which is why we wrote it down in advance in the earlier step. And the second thing is the password for the customer's router. We can either write that down in advance or let the customer type it in if they'd prefer not to share. The leftmost light on the Wi-Fi kit should be flashing red. This shows it is in connection mode, ready to link to a router. If the light is not flashing, press the black button on the Wi-Fi kit to put it in connection mode. In your phone, go to the settings menu and then to Wi-Fi. Wait for it to find and display the list of available connections. Find and select the connection that says Hunter Wi-Fi XXX, where the X's are the last four digits of the serial number you wrote down. This connects your phone to the Wi-Fi kit. When the phone is connected, the screen will change to the Wi-Fi setup screen. It will show you a list of all available connections, but this time you will select the customer's host router. Select the network and then type in the password for the network. It may take a minute or two to connect and then the middle light will turn green. Open the browser on your mobile device and type in centralis.hunterindustries.com. This will prompt you to either log in or create a new free Hunter account. Now that you're into Centralis, it's time to add the new controller to the software. Click Add Controller. If you already had previous controllers set up, click the menu button in the top left corner and select Add Controller. Enter the name for the controller and the Wi-Fi kit serial number that was engraved on the inside edge of the Wi-Fi kit. Do not use dashes and be sure to include any zeros. It must have a 10-digit number that exists in the Hunter database. Click Next to continue. Enter a valid street address. It must be an address that can be verified by the map function so it can be placed on the map. When the address is entered, you will see a small map window with a pin drop for the controller address. Click Next. The software will attempt to communicate with the controller using the serial number you provided. 
Next, we'll need to verify that a person is at the controller for security reasons. The software will show an image of a controller dial with a randomly chosen dial position indicated. Turn the dial on the actual controller and click Next so the software can verify that this was done. The lights on the Wi-Fi kit will flash amber when the software communicates with it. If the actual dial position matches the image in the software, the validation is done. The screen will prompt you to return the dial to the run position. Do this and click Next. The controller will now be added to the Centralis database. Press Continue. You will now see the new controller's individual page with the forecast based on the address and menu selections to access the controller. In some cases, you may be adding Centralis to a controller panel that was manufactured before Centralis was released. Then you will be prompted to update the controller firmware before you can proceed with operating the controller. Firmware is a name for the software that runs inside the controller. If the server detects that you have an older version, it will prompt you to update it over the air. Choose Update Firmware on the screen. The software will begin downloading the latest version of ICC2 firmware to the controller. This will take approximately 12 minutes or more, depending on the strength and speed of your wireless connection. During this time, you will not be able to operate the controller and it will not water automatically or manually. The display will count as the download proceeds. When the download is finished, the controller will automatically restart and show the time of day display again. After this, you can return to Centralis to operate the controller. When you click any of the menu choices for the first time, you will see the first time setup page. This will give you a choice. Use the current settings at the controller or start with a blank controller. If the controller was already programmed and you're just adding communications to it, you can click use current settings at the controller and the software will upload the existing programming to your database. This will save you a lot of work. If it is a brand new installation, click start with a blank controller. Then you can program the whole irrigation schedule from your phone and download it to the controller. The controller is now set up, updated, and ready to program or operate. Once you have your free Centralis account created, you can add as many controllers as you want without repeating the account creation process. For more information on Centralis, visit us at hunterindustries.com.